Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Got a couple of announcements for you. First of all, ladies, um, I apologize for the late notice on this, but there is actually a way that we can contribute to volunteering in the Wabash Valley this coming Friday, the 22nd, from 8.30 to 12.30. Um, actually, 8.30 to noon is um, United Way Day of Volunteering. Um, so if you're interested and available, if you could please let me know before the end of the service or right at the end of the service, I'll hang around for a few minutes. Um, myself and Sherry are definitely going to do it. Um, and there is a, um, an opportunity. You basically sign up for projects, but there's one that's not too difficult physically. It's um, basically sorting donated items, which I know us ladies are all good at sorting and coordinating. So. If you are available and you'd like to do it, please let me know and I'll send you the information so you can sign up officially. There's actually a breakfast at 7.30 in the morning at Zora Shrine Temple that if you're able to go, um, you, can, you can do that as well. And there's a free t-shirt in it for you. So hopefully we can do that, ladies, and, and do some volunteering for the community. Our 100-year anniversary celebration is coming up. Very exciting. We're going to have a whole weekend of celebration, October 1st and October 2nd. So if you're interested in helping out with that, um, please let Val know. Is that right? Val is coordinating that. So if you would like to help with that, please um, contact Val. Also, if you know anyone that's attended in the past 100 years um, that is no longer going here but maybe is in the area, um, if you could let the office know if you have their name and address, we would love to invite them for our celebration. And I know there's, there's plenty of those folks that would love to help us celebrate. Um, the Overflow NYC 23 wall, if you haven't seen it, right out here um, across from the Welcome Center, there's a wall, a uh, beautiful wall displayed, and you can take one of those cards and you can um, donate that dollar amount, whatever you want, all the way from $1, I think, to $100, um, and you can help pay for the youth and the adults that are going to need to go um, to uh, support NYC. So if you would check that out and you're willing, we would love to um, have you contribute with that. Consumed Youth is on tonight at 5. Senior Saints, you've got an event coming up August 4th um, at 2 p.m. in the Family Life Center. And um, let's see, fun and food, it says. So nothing specific that they need to bring at this one, right? No, just come and have food and fun. All right, great. Seniors, August 4th, mark your calendars. And I think, let me see... I think that's it. Please check out your online bulletin. Um, the loop is always updated, and so we want to make sure that you get signed up for events. If you would take a few moments to greet one another in the name of the Lord.
food. Good morning. As you make your way back to your seats, um, could you stand with me today? Do you know why you're here? Do you know why you're here today? I know why I'm here. I want to know him. Amen? I want to see God. I want to wake up each day and be more aware of his presence in my life. Amen? I want to see his kingdom in the midst of this world so I can be a part of it and I can do my part. When we allow God to open our hearts, we can come to see God in his true self as the one true God who created everything. He deserves all of our praise and adoration. When we sing praises to him, we lift him up and exalt him. Let us sing praises, his praises this morning. And you're already standing, so I would have said, would you stand, please? But stand with us and sing with us. Give God all the glory. God is more powerful than anything in heaven or on earth. And when you accept Jesus' invitation to, become, uh, to begin a relationship with him, you are secure in his love forever. Isn't that awesome? This is nothing, there is nothing pa more powerful, sorry. I, ha I have wrote this out today. It was so powerful, I couldn't even speak this. But there is nothing more powerful, and there is nothing powerful enough to separate you from God's love. Wow. Even when things are difficult or you feel far from God, it's not because God stops loving you. The truth is that God will never stop loving you no matter what you do. Isn't that awesome? Let's sing his praises this morning. Oh, yeah. 
slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is a Are you, if you're here this morning and you recognize, that song said, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. If you're here this morning and you recognize all that God has done for you, if you're thankful for all that God has done for you, can we give him a praise offering this morning? Absolutely. I tell you what. Yep. I tell you. I don't know where I'd be without all that God has done for me. I don't know where I'd be. It's not here. It's not here. I'm very thankful this morning. As we come and we express our thanks to the Lord and we praise him for all that he's done for us, may we come this morning and be obedient to him in the little that he has asked of us. And so this morning, let's go to God in prayer, and then we're going to go in and, and worship him through our tithes and our offerings. So let's, would you join me in prayer this morning? Oh, Heavenly Father, that song was so spot on this morning. Just, Lord, we are so thankful for all that you have done for us. Lord, you know the place that I was in when you, when you found me and you pulled me out of that miry clay. Yeah, my miry clay looks different than other people's miry clay. But Lord, I am so thankful this morning for you and all that you have done for me. You never cease to bless me, Lord, even when I don't deserve it, even when I've I've done things that I shouldn't. Lord, you don't operate the way that we operate. You love anyway. You bless anyway. You show grace and compassion anyway. Lord, we're so thankful for you this morning. And Lord, as we come, we want to worship you. We want to worship you for all that you've done for us. And so as we come together this morning, Lord, as a family, Lord, we invite you to come and be a part of our service, Lord, that that maybe we can bless you back this morning as we worship you. And so, Lord, this morning as we continue on with worship, we want to worship you with our tithes and our offerings. Lord, we come this morning with a cheerful heart, a thankful heart for all that you've done for us. And, Lord, we want to give back just a portion of all that you've given us. And so, Lord, this morning we bring these before you. We ask you to to bless both this gift and the giver alike. And Lord, be with us and, and, and help us to know how you would have us to use this to further your kingdom here in this community. And we pray all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everybody said amen? Amen. 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 Those plates are here in the front. Won't you please come?
Also this morning, kids, you are dismissed for Children's Church. Amen. Can you stand with us as we continue to worship in song?
never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love.
in this world can become outdated. I think I saw a payphone recently. <laughs> I thought, who in the world uses a payphone anymore? Other things can become outdated, right? I was one of, I had a flip phone and I didn't want to switch to the, to the Android and my, my family, they teased me about it. <laughs> you know, our furniture can become outdated. So many things become outdated. We say, well, that person was yesterday's news. Even people can become, people that were stars and famous and in the limelight, we say they were, they were yesterday's news. But, you know, Jesus and what he offers will never go out of style, will never go. No matter what the world says, people will say Jesus is old news. That was for another generation, another time. That's not what the Bible says. In the book of Hebrews, the writer to the Hebrews wrote to them because they were in danger of going back to a system that was obsolete. The old covenant system had been done away with, and he was reminding them that what Jesus offers will last forever. Hebrews 7 says, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. Now, there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in the office, but Jesus lives forever. He has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to him through God because he always lives to intercede for them. So this morning, as we go to prayer, the altars are open. Remember, you can talk to Jesus anytime about anything. Jesus offers us something better than the world can even possibly offer us. He can save completely. So if you're struggling with anything, bring it to the Lord this morning. He wants to hear the prayers of his people. In fact, he is praying for you right now from heaven. Whether we can physically hear it with our ears or not, the Bible says Jesus is praying for you right now. So let's go to prayer and let, let's talk to him. Whatever's on your heart, Whatever is troubling you, bring it to the Lord. He wants to hear the prayers of his people. Would you join me in prayer this morning? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. You are our high priest. You are interceding for your people right now. You're praying for us. Lord, you're never outdated. You have no beginning. You have no end. So you can never be outdated. You can never grow old. Lord, you are our high priest. You went to the cross for us. You came to redeem us. Lord, we were lost in our sins, had no hope in this world, thought this was all there was, was this old, broken world. Sin had, has destroyed many lives, but you, Lord, looked down from heaven and, and said, I'm not going to let that be the end. I'm not going to let the devil and sin have the final word. And Lord, you had the final word on the cross. You said it is finished. And you made a spectacle of the devil and his plan. Lord, you made a way for the world. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so, Lord, we confess Lord, that sometimes it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe the promises of God when we can't see them clearly. But Lord, that's why we walk by faith and not by sight. That's why we believe every word that's in the Bible because it's breathed from heaven. It's a supernatural book. It's no ordinary book. So Lord, as the disciples asked you, Lord, increase our faith. If we are struggling in our faith or tempted to backslide, Help us to remember that Jesus offers something better. 
He's the author of a better covenant. He offers the new and living way, the new and living way. So Lord, help us today. Help us today to be a people of God that proclaim and live lives for you. It says you're able to save completely. So Lord, you can set us apart and save us completely. Where we're totally sold out and say, Lord, I'm going to depend on you for everything. No matter what I'm facing, I'm going to depend on you and trust you in every single situation. And so Lord, help us to be a people that shine the light of the gospel. Help us to be a people that are about the Father's business as you were, Jesus. Help us to be kingdom-minded people, to see this world through the lens of Jesus, to see people the, the way Jesus did, a people that need a Savior, a people that need a family. And so, Lord, we're here today to hear from you. You're still speaking. You gave us your holy word so that we could still hear from you. And so, Lord, I pray over the rest of the service, I pray for Pastor Denny as he preaches, that we hear a word from heaven today. It's fresh bread from heaven. So, Lord, any concerns that we have, I pray that we, we lay them at your feet. You are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Lord, may you be lifted up high today. And as we leave here today, may each one of us say we have met with the Lord Jesus Christ in some way today. We thank you for the local church. We thank you for God's people. We pray for the lost. We pray for the broken. We pray for healing today physical healing or spiritual healing, Lord, you are the God who saves completely. So we lay it at your feet today, Lord. Help us today. Help us to respond also as well to the message. And Lord, to you be the glory both now and forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Can we say praise the Lord together? Yes. Amen. Amen. I want you to stand with me, please. I want us to honor God and at His Word. Amen. The victorious Word of God continues because summer continues. And uh, it's been, I pray that uh, it's been good for you. Uh, I, I pray it's been good for your family that you've been in the Word. If you've not, if you've not been in the Word regularly, begin now. Begin now. There is no, no shame coming from this preacher if you've not been there. But I strongly encourage you to get in there. Get in God's Word. It is the bread of life. So if, if, you're, if, if a part of your, your, uh, your, daily, your daily intake of food is not, uh, has not included the bread of life, you need to start because that means your diet is missing something, actually more, something more important than anything you might be taking in. It's, amen? Amen. Let's read this together. Oh, man, this is going to be good today. Hope, you, uh, hope you've come ready to receive what the Lord has. Read it with me. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. You got that? That's really important. Just really, it, not really, but it, it's important. So here, this, is, this is the main thing right here. Ready? On the count of three. Get up and go. And I didn't even count. One, two, three. Get up and go. Hey, turn to the neighbor and say, get up and go. Nobody leave, but get up and go. Oh, let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word already. Lord, help us to understand what it's saying to us. We want to know, God, what it's saying to us personally. Uh, Lord, this message that you gave to, to Jonah, Lord, I believe that it's for us today. Right now, 2022, oh God, help us to hear the voice of God clearly today. We pray in the name of Jesus, and all people said amen. amen. All people said glory to God, glory and even said hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. How about it? Amen. amen. Hey, I tell you what, do this, do this. Uh, all of you just put both hands up in the air. There you go. I tell you what, some of you have never done that in church. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Some of you have never raised both hands up in the church because you thought, oh, that's, that's for somebody else. No, God deserves us to express praise and adoration with lifted hands to him. Amen? That's for all of us, not just for somebody. <laughs> yeah, I, I, now I expect that from you every Sunday. So, uh, <laughs> no, 
Oh, let's express our, our praise and, and adoration to God. Who else deserves it more? You know, do you know anybody? Do you know anybody? No, you don't. No, you don't. Amen. The victorious word of God. And, and we're, we're looking at a, a portion of scripture, a story in God's word that uh, most, I, I would say, know this story. Uh, maybe all of you do. When it comes to Jonah and the whale, we, we call it a whale. Most, most versions of the Bible call it big fish. We just know something was big in the water that, that Jonah was thrown into. All right? We, we just know that. Big enough to swallow a full-grown man. All right? So let's just understand that. Whale, big fish, whatever it was, something crazy happened. <laughs> something crazy. But we we, we want to understand why this happened. All right? why this took place so first of all if you're taking some notes today when god speaks when he speaks what do we do and i say we collectively make it personal when god speaks what do i do it's important for us to know we are a corporate body we we are a family of god whether we're here or online or or we got some folks on vacation that's that's a part of it we understand that but we have to understand this is so vital for us personally when God speaks to me what do I do with what he says so here we go the Lord gave this message to Jonah son of Amittai get up and go so so God is telling Jonah initially to do something that means whatever he is doing in that moment, God wants him to do something else. Wherever he is in that moment that he receives the message from God, God doesn't want him to stay there. He's got somewhere else for Jonah to go. If, if Jonah is really comfortable where he's at, the comfort that he might be experiencing isn't God's greatest concern for Jonah. There's something much greater that needs to be taken care of, and it can't happen where Jonah is. He's got to get up and go. Are you with me yet? Can't stay there, Jonah. Somewhere needs the message that I've got for you to share. That's the first thing that God says, I want, you to, I want you to get up and go. I want you to go to the great city of Nineveh. Great city meaning large, commerce, lots of activity, but a lot of things that are going on in that city are not of God. So God says, I want you to announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. Oh, no. You want me to get up and go somewhere that I really don't want to go. Actually, I don't want to go there, but you want me to tell them something that I don't want to share with anybody. You know, God, if I tell some folks what you want me to tell them, this might just get me offed. That means O-F-F off. That means out of the picture. That, that means, means kill. I don't want to go there, and I definitely don't want to tell them what you want me to tell them. This is how it all begins. Jonah hears from God. That means Jonah has a choice. He's got a decision to make. What am I going to do with God? Is what God is telling me. What am I going to do? If God has told me something, I've got a decision to make. I've got to make a choice whether I hear it and just hear it and go about, on about my business or that I actually respond to it and follow through with it. Hmm. It's just us in here, right? Not one of us love to be told what to do. Amen. 
that, I mean, that goes with this. Even if what we are being told is the very best, the very best guidance that could be received, we still don't like being told because we like to do what we want to do. We are very inclined to meet. You're very inclined to you. Think about passion for a minute. And I'm, I'm not talking about the, uh, the passion, like the intimate, intimate passion. I'm talking about passion that we would have for ourselves. Just think about all the investment, all the things that we do for ourselves because we are so inclined to do what we want to do. And when it doesn't go that direction, we, man, that burns the biscuits. That, that's a southern saying that just means things don't go very well, and I ain't like that. When you hear God, when you hear from Him, just like Jonah, there is a choice. There's a decision that you and I have to make when we receive a message from God. What will you do? What will you do when you receive from Him? You know, it's interesting. It's interesting to me. I think, I think it would be interesting to you too just, just to be reminded of this or be inclined to it. That when it comes to the majority of decisions that you and I have in our lives, so much of the time we will invest time, we'll invest money, uh, we, we will seek counsel. Sometimes we will even go and pay a counselor to give us some help, to give us some understanding, clarity on a decision that we need to make. We will, we will invest much in the majority of our decisions. We want to know. We'll bounce our, our choice that we have off of people that we think are, are pretty smart, maybe wise. We, we do that. But when it comes to, when it comes to the choice of, of hearing what God tells us to do and doing it, I tell you what, a lot of times, a lot of, most of the time it seems these days, we just kind of push that to the side. Why would we invest so much in the majority of decisions that we make in our human existence, but we would, we be, we would, we seem to push aside the most important decisions that we have to decide upon what God has has brought our way, what God has spoke, what God, the the message God has put into our life that we would just kind of dismiss that and not even think about the consequences of our dismissing it. We're talking about the Creator God, God Almighty, the one that made the universe, and He, he speaks to you and me. But so oftentimes, God speaks into our life with a message that we would really rather not hear. This is Jonah. And it just, it just spoke to me so loudly this week as I looked into the scripture that I've looked into many, many times. And I'm like, you know what? All of us have a little bit of Jonah in us. All of us are a little Jonah-esque. It's true, whether we want to accept it or not. We're all a little like Jonah. Hmm. We don't want the consequences. So just maybe if we avoid the choice that's before us, making a decision on it, maybe, just maybe, we'll avoid the consequences of not making the decision. What do we do when God speaks? What do you do when he speaks. I really believe the whole turning point in all of this has to do with the position, the posture of the heart. If we 
will let ourselves hunger and thirst for the things of God more than anything, this is the beautiful thing that happens. We want then to hear what God says. We then want to hear what his message is for us. When we are seeking after his heart more than we seek after the things that we would want in our fleshly heart, we want the things of God more than anything, then we love hearing what God has to say. We love hearing where God wants us to go because we know, we know that whatever God is up to, that's what we want to be up to as well. That's where we want to go. That's what we want to be a part of. That's what we want to be known for being a part of. The things of God. Wouldn't it be cool for those that, that are on Facebook from some time to time or any other social media that all of a sudden people began to post things like, I am searching for the heart of God. I'm longing to, to please my Heavenly Father. I, I, I want to be known as a true, devoted, holy a holy cross bearing Christ follower. Can you imagine? I mean, it, it would be pandemonium because that's not what, not what all the social media is supposed to be about, right? You know, it would shake things up if people begin to say, This, this is what I'm after now. I'm, I'm not going to post all these crazy things that matter nothing to the kingdom of God. I want, I want people to know that I am after the things of God. If God tells me something, I want to be known as someone who is after following it. Amen? Secondly is this. When God speaks, where do we go? So it's not just a matter of what do we do with what he says to us. It's where do we go? Again, it's a part of the whole choice. It's a part of the whole response of what God is speaking into our lives. And in this case with Jonah, listen to this. Verse 3, but Jonah, after being told by God, get up and go. I want you to go to Nineveh. I've got a message for you to tell them. Jonah, he does get up. But he went in the opposite direction that God told him to go. See, again, all of us have a little bit of Jonah in us. He went in the opposite direction. Again, if God says, go this direction. If a, if a wise counselor says, you need to go in this direction, but we are receiving it as, don't you tell me what to do. I don't want to be told what to do. We had grandkids for the last, what, how long at our house? Two years? No. <laughs> no it, it was great. It was great. It was. It was. Kids are probably watching. It was. It was. We had a blast. We did. I tell you, that, that little four and a half a year old girl. Sweet Pea, Emily Grace. She can be told something, and she'll be walking. You tell her, don't go that direction. She'll look back and go. <laughs> That's in a four-and-a-half-year-old's way of saying, don't you tell me what to do. <laughs> Got to jerk that little thing up, you know. that's us too I mean it makes us laugh and we can see it but don't tell me what to do don't tell me where to go I don't want to be told what I'm supposed to do I want to do what I want to I, I want to make my own plan this is my life So Jonah got up and he went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. Now we can sit here in, in this church house and we can be a part of it online and say, man, Jonah, that was so stupid. And Emily Grace would say, don't say that, Pops. If she was sitting right there, she would have said it out loud. Don't say that word, Pops. They don't use stupid at times. 
but since she's not here, that's a stupid thing to do. Why in the world would anybody, if they receive direction from God, why would they choose to go in the other direction? Let me make it real personal with us. When you and I have received direction from God, and we have time and time and time and time again, why have we gone in the other direction? I mean, that makes it, I know, I know. I've, I've gone to meddle in a bit. But it's the truth. God has told all of us time and time and time again where to go, what to do, and where to go. And so many times we have just He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. Again, Still, all, everything that he's making a choice in now is going in the opposite direction of where he's supposed to be going. He, brought, he bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. It matters not. You're in my geography. We can't get away from God and his truth. You, are you hearing it? It doesn't matter how far you try to go. It doesn't matter how far Jonah tries to go. You cannot get away from God. Why? Because he is omnipresent. So no matter where you are, there he is. And here's the thing, wherever you might be going, he's already before you. Well, why isn't God in Nineveh where he wants me to go? Again, God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He owns the whole campus. What's his campus? It's everything. You call it our universe. Nah, it's beyond the universe. Whatever is beyond it's all his, so he is everywhere at all times. So no matter, no matter what, what, what Jonah is trying to do with every fiber of his being, he is even putting money out to buy a ticket to, to get away from what God wants him to do. It still, it still is not going to help him escape what God has said. Lord, help us. I pray, I'm saying this prayer with my eyes. Lord, help us to want to know what God is saying, where God wants us to go, and we want with all of our heart to go and do exactly what he said, that we won't waste our time trying to go in the opposite direction. Amen? Anybody else amen that? And yet, does it mean it's going to be easy? In this case, is it going to be smooth sailing? No, no, no. Following God's, God's will is not for the faint of heart. It's for people that say, I'm in this for whatever it costs. Whatever it takes, I'm going to go after what God wants with my life. Because really, when it comes right down to it, if he's placed us here, he's placed us here for his will to be done in and through our lives, not our will to be done because we're asking him for it. trying to get away from the consequences, trying so hard not to, not to be what, where God wants, Tr try, trying to get away from anybody that might even know him to save face, you know, put on appearance like everything's fine. Where will we run? Hmm. So you all know the story. Things got really crazy out there on the water. And, 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 and the sailors who worshipped other gods, 
they got, they got some kind of vibe here. Something is wrong. And the main thing that seems to be wrong is this guy that, that's, that's floating on the boat with us. Then they realize through him that he is trying to get away from his God that told him what to do. And, he, and they're like, why are you doing this to us? And they themselves start praying to Jonah's God. And, and, the, and, the, and the deciding, the, dis, the decision that was made, we got we, we to throw him over. And Jonah was just fine with that. Do you know that so many people make decisions to not be in line with God, to follow God, and, and if, if, if they're not careful, they, they will allow themselves to drift so far from God that, that they just accept the, that suicide's fine. Death is fine. I, that, that, death is just fine with me. And we know that's a lie of the enemy. But Jonah, he's got to that point. He, no pun intended, he has drifted so far from where God wants him to be that the enemy has spoke so, so, so loudly into his life. It's not like, ah, death's fine. Go ahead and throw me over. Throw me over. Well, as it goes, they throw him over. The waters get calm pretty quick. But God sends a what? Yes. And gulped him up. He spent three days and nights in the belly of that fish. You know what? As nasty, as smelly, as gross as that must have been, it was the best thing that could ever happen to Jonah. Now, I want you to I want to try to clarify something here. I've seen pictures all my life, and it was like Jonah in the belly of a fish, and he's got a campfire, and he's cooking a hot dog. It's like a campsite in there. <laughs> Pastor Matthias, I don't think it was quite like that. No hot dogs then. It was nothing like it. He was in the belly of a fish. Whale, big, whatever the thing was, it swallowed him like a worm gets swallowed by a bass. He was fish bait. Three days, three nights. <laughs> Watch this, verse 17 of chapter 1. Now the Lord had arranged for a, a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside. Now listen to this. This is from the inside of this big fish. Chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. He said, I cried out to the Lord in, in, in my great trouble, and he answered me. I called to you and from the land of the dead. Now understand, when he, when he was in the water, death was coming upon him. Drowning was going to take place. That's where he decided to be, but once he decided he was in that water, he realized that's not where, where I really want to be. So God sent this fish, swallowed him up. I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead, and the Lord, you heard me. You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. It just pause here. Don't. Hear this just for Jonah's story's sake. What I just read, many of us have, have had those feelings. We've, we've, we've experienced that in the deep waters of life, being engulfed by the waters of life, feeling as though there is no hope now. I don't know what to do now. I don't know where to turn now. I don't know. 
Now what? (laughs) I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, oh Lord, you have driven me from your presence, yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. I sank beneath the waves, and the waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sank down to the very roots of the mountains. I was imprisoned in the earth whose gates locked shut forever. But you, O oh Lord God, that's, isn't that the case? But you, O oh Lord God, you've got to that time. I've, but God! Things, are, things seem to be just a chaotic mess. I, I don't know what to do now with this. I, I don't know what to do now. But God, but God, say it to your neighbor, but God, say it to your neighbor, but God, but God, but oh Lord God, <laughs> you snatched me from me from the jaws of death. As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord, and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. Those who worship false gods turn their backs on all God's mercies, but I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise, and I will fulfill all my vows. For my salvation comes from the Lord alone. Do you know what happened in the three days that Jonah was in the whale, in the big fish, inside where he was swallowed up, in there became, hang on now, it became the house of prayer. It became the sanctuary. For three days, in that belly of that big fish, Jonah began to make a turn back to God. And here is the question. What will it take for for someone else to make the turn? And maybe in your life, and maybe in your marriage, maybe in your home with your children or or whomever, But what, what will it take for you to make a turn? Will it take being swallowed up by a big old fish? What will it take for Jonah? And again, we've loved this story. It's, it's, it's always been a beautiful story, even though the next, next portion of, of the story in the prayer is, so God allowed the fish to puke him up on the shore. It's so beautiful. It wasn't just a spit up, you know. The Lord ordered the fish. Forgive me for digressing a bit there. The Lord ordered that fish to spit Jonah out on the beach. The fish was what helped to bring about the turning point. That Jonah and his direction was in the opposite direction of what God wanted for his life. God loves us so much. He knows what he made you and me for. And he, he is always reaching to us. He wants us to go in his direction. He knows that's the best thing. That's the best thing. That's his will. And he doesn't want us to miss it. He loved Jonah too much to allow him to be swallowed up by the waves and his life be be torn away. He loves you and me so much. To be honest, he's He's always willing to send a big fish your way, mine. 
whatever it might be, whatever, whatever the need might be, God is always sending something your way and mine to help us to experience a turning point. Because he knows. He knows we as human beings are way too easily swayed by the current. Geography will not make a difference. God is always reaching to you and me right where we are in the depths of life, in the most difficult experiences, in the, in the most painful losses of life. God is reaching. He's reaching. He wants us to be a part of a turning point. To go, if it's a Nineveh, we go to Nineveh. If, if it's to say yes to helping someone that lives next to us, we do it because that's where God is sending us. Whatever it is, God is making a way for us to be a part of what he said to do. Amen? I believe that with all my heart. All my heart. Why don't you stand with me? Go ahead, come on up, priest team. Everyone else, let's bow our heads together as we stand before the Lord. Might the Lord be speaking into your heart today, inviting you to be a part of making a turn <laughs> where you are in your set of circumstances. Maybe you have tried your very best to go in the other direction of where God said to go or go in the other direction of doing what God asked you to do. And I know, I know of so many that there has been a running away from for long enough period of time. Too many people say, well, no use turning now back. No use uh, changing now. Well, that would be just the lie of the enemy. If, uh, if old Jonah can have a divine, powerful encounter with God Almighty in the belly of a big fish, you and I can have a divine, powerful encounter with him in this place right now today. Why would we want to repeat what Jonah did and get into the, all the muck and the mire and the stench of what would be going on in the belly of a big fish. Why would we want that when we could be right here, right now, in the beauty of, of, of God's house and to say, God, I, I want to hear what you have to say to me. I want to hear your message. And I, I want to go where you're telling me to go. I want to do what you have told me to do. I don't want to make excuses. I don't want to make excuses any longer. I want to make sure that I don't make the kind of choices that Jonah did. I want to be with you, Lord. If that's where you are today, just to be honest before God and say, I, that's, that's what... I want to be a part of is God's will. I don't want to be known as someone that is a lot like Jonah. I want to be known as someone who is a lot like Jesus. I want to be known as someone who, who is passionate about honoring the Father 
with every choice, every decision that needs to be made. And possibly this morning you've got a situation in your life that is difficult, circumstances that are really troubling and painful. Maybe you're struggling on how to make a decision because a decision that God wants you to go might not look like on paper as lucrative as, as what as what something else might be. And God's saying, you got to trust me. <laughs> and it's so hard to trust. Fear can take over. as the praise team begins to sing this, this song that has been sung for years of surrender that really is what it takes old Jonah had to finally surrender himself one more time to what God wanted for his life God wants you to trust him with your surrender to him he does individually as a family those of you gathered here those online just surrender to him he does not make mistakes he cannot lead someone in the wrong direction he will not provide what what does what what isn't needed God is always perfect in every way and he wants you to be a part of that Lord as we sing this morning as we respond this morning if if you are calling us Lord to kneel before you and pray however Lord help us to be obedient to your leading in our lives help us God to acknowledge your love for us and it's so deep and vast you're, draw, you're calling for us and you're drawing us to yourself God help us to be responsive to that so that we will be close with you and not miss the direction that you're giving us I pray in your precious name Lord as I sing if you feel the the tug of the, 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 on your heart from the Lord. Just come and pray. Bring your circumstances. Bring your past. Bring your decisions. Bring your pains. Bring it to the Lord. And God will, God will provide, as he did Jonah, a turning point. Thank you, Jesus.
about surrender. Oh, Jonah, things changed when he allowed the turning point to take place. <laughs> he had some consequences. He did. By being spit up on that, that beach, he had a little cleaning up to do from where he had been. That's just us. There's always work to do. There's always work to do. We've always got work to do to become more like Jesus. <laughs> Amen. This old world can get on us. It can affect us. But praise God. God knows what we need, and He will always provide it. And I pray that we will be people that always respond to it obediently. Amen. Amen. Pastor Matthias, come. Lead us in a closing word of prayer. Let's pray together and we're going to sing a few, a few words of celebration of God's goodness in our life. Amen. God is good. Thank you that you are the God of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and either the New Jerusalem or the day beyond that. We thank you that you know where we are. You know where to find us. If you could find a would-be prophet in the belly of a whale or a big, big, bo uh, big fish, you can do it. You can find us. And you did. And you found us. And we're here rejoicing in your presence. We do want to go all the way with you. Praise God. We want to be where you lead us. Bless oh, this yes, pastor, Lord. we pray, and our people together. Mm. And we'll praise you this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, brother. Let's sing this to him together with all of our heart. Glory, the King above all kings. 